from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the daily TV Mass. I'm Father Peter Turonen. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from our donors. The first is Patricia Ann Leachy from Mississauga, Ontario, for the repose of the soul of John Leachy and deceased family members, and for peace in the world. And second, for Rooney, Teresa, and Andre from Beaumont, Texas, in loving memory of their parents, Paul and Sidonia, Thomas Need, for all deceased members of the Thomas and Need families, and in thanksgiving for all blessings received for the Daily TV Mass community. The Daily, Daily TV Mass ministry is made possible by the generous contributions of all our donors and in a special way, our monthly donors. For this month, to our Almighty God, we ask in our community prayer that you might guide us to enter more deeply into the spirit of Lent and into the forgiveness, reconciliation, and renewal that it offers us. Our thanks to all of our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who grant us by glorious healing remedies while still on earth to be partakers of the things of heaven, guide us, we pray, through this present life and bring us to that light in which you dwell. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Micah prayed to the Lord in these words, Shepherd your people with your staff, the flock that belongs to you, which lives alone in a forest in the midst of a garden land. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old as in the days when you came out of the land of Egypt, show us marvelous things. Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of your possession? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in showing clemency. He will again have compassion upon us he will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. You will show faithfulness to Jacob and unserving loyalty to Abraham, as you have sworn to our ancestors from the days of old. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. The Lord is kind and merciful. 
the Lord will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. The Lord is kind and merciful. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. I will rise and go to my father and tell him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. O Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, quickly bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field. And when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has gotten back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, for all these years, I've been working like a slave for you and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back, he who devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. And the father said to him, son, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is kind and merciful. My brothers and sisters, during the season of Lent, growing up as a child, they used to air this beautiful series called Jesus of Nazareth from Francesco Zeffirelli, famous director. And I remember one of my favorite scenes 
was after Jesus calls Matthew and he's having this great celebration with the publicans and all the sinners there. And then you have Peter, who's very angry. So St. Peter is at the door. He refuses to come in to celebrate. So in Francesco's mind, he puts Peter as the elder brother. So he's over there and he's watching. And then Jesus looks at him with pleading eyes. And he, he says this beautiful parable, which we call the parable of the prodigal son. But it's probably better to call it the parable of the merciful father, because ultimately it has less to do with the sons and has more to do with the father because the whole aim of the season of Lent has to do with becoming more like the Father. And this is such a beautiful gospel. I remember my liturgy professor was telling us that in the extraordinary form of the Mass, and um, this never appeared in the lectionary. So it was only after the Second Vatican Council, this is one of the gifts to the Church, to be able to hear this you know, universally in all the parishes throughout the world, to hear of the merciful Father's love for us. So nevertheless, we go back to the gospel. And so we hear that Peter's there again. And so Peter is angry. So Jesus looks at him and then he says this beautiful, beautiful parable. And then little by little, Peter starts to break down and he realizes that he himself is hard hearted and therefore he needs himself to repent. And he says, Lord, I'm just a stupid man. I'm just a stupid man. And then they embrace each other. And then again, we see again this great moment of joy in the eyes of Christ and those that are gathered. And this gospel is so instructive to each and every one of us. See, again, the whole season of Lent is about coming back to the Father. When we look at the prodigal son, right, beginning with him, we see in the prodigal son, Adam. Adam was a member of the royal household. He was in perfect relationship with the Father and with Eve. And they chose to break away from God. They chose to leave the garden. They chose to leave God's kingdom. And what did they trade it for? For a pile of manure. It's the same thing that the prodigal son does. He is a son of a royal father. He has everything he can possibly imagine, yet his heart is not there. His heart is elsewhere. And it's so bad that he actually wishes, in a sense, saying to his father, you're dead to me. Because when you ask somebody for your inheritance, you're basically saying that you want that person dead. And he goes off and he does all sorts of things. And then, especially as a Jewish man, to end up to the point where you're, you're taking care of pigs, Right? and you're envying the fact that the pigs have more food to eat than you do, you know that he's hit rock bottom. And it's not that he's completely sorry for what he's done, but he realizes, like, this is not working for me. I need to do something else. And then he gets up, and then he goes back to the Father. And this is where it gets really good, because we hear that the Father is there, and he's outside waiting for him. So it seems as if the Father was going every day, looking and hoping that his son was going to return. That's a beautiful thing about God the Father. So many beautiful things, right? Sometimes we can be afraid of the Lord, and there's no need to because Jesus reveals to us a father with the heart of a mother. So he's always waiting and looking. And then the son arrives. He tells the father. He says, you know, I've sinned against heaven and against you. And then the father doesn't let him continue. The father knows what he's done, but he's so happy to have him back. And then he restores him back to his royal dignity by giving him sandals, again, restoring it with the new cloth, with the new clothing. Again, it's to remind us of the gift of baptism. And then the ring, again, being part of royalty. And there's this great rejoicing that takes place. But unfortunately, not everybody's happy. We know that the elder brother himself is very angry. He reminds me of some Catholics that do things only out of obligation and not because they really love God, haven't understood his love. And it's most unfortunate when you think about it. How many of us Catholics don't do certain things because we don't want to go to hell? That's the only reason in the end. And therefore, we do things begrudgingly. And perhaps maybe imagine if, if certain prohibitions were taken away, that we would just go along and do the same like everyone else. But we haven't understood that what the Father has revealed to us is beautiful and is good. And therefore, we have this great dignity through our baptism. And at times, perhaps we've squandered it, thrown it away, and we need to restore it. So it's not just about dissolution and sin in terms of our traditional understanding, but also hardness of heart as we see in the elder brother as well. So we can both be the elder brother and we can be the prodigal son. And it's sometimes if we could have had a really bad life and then repented, but then at the same time, as the years pass, we can become like the elder brother 
If that's the case, if you find yourself with a hard heart, then this is the only time I would recommend this, but some of the, the saints tell us, then you remember about what you've done in the past. It's not always a good thing to do, especially if you struggle with melancholy and scrupulosity, but if you find that you're being very judgmental, it's very good to think about the, the things that you've done, the sins that you've done, and repent. And we ask Mary. The Virgin Mary, she never left the kingdom. She always remained in God's kingdom, in God's arms, and that's why we can turn to Mary and we can ask her to pray for us and pray for the church so that over this, uh, this course of, of Lent, as we continue on our journey, that we will become less like the sons, the prodigal son and the older brother, but we can become more like the son, Jesus Christ, and the Heavenly Father. If we're able to grow in this way, then Lent will have been truly successful and our Easter celebration will be truly glorious. My brothers and sisters, let us pray to our Heavenly Father, asking for grace for ourselves and for the church and for all those who are away from the Lord. For the baptized, as they continue their journey to renewal at Easter, we pray to the Lord. For all those in our daily TV Mass prayer intentions book, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Almighty and ever-living God, we ask in our community prayer that you might guide us to enter more deeply into the spirit of Lent and into the forgiveness, reconciliation, and renewal that it offers us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For this community, and particularly for those who are sick in mind and body or spirit, and for the faithful departed, we now remember. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of wisdom and light, your words guide our lives. Hear the prayers we make in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, a work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of the Holy Church. Through these sacred gifts we pray, O Lord, may our redemption yield its fruits, restraining us from unruly desires and leading us onward to the gifts of salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, We praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, O Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. May your divine sacrament, O Lord, which we have received, fill the inner depths of our heart, and by its working mightily within us, make us partakers of its grace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the ears of your mercy be open, O Lord, to the prayers of those who call upon you, and that you may grant what they desire. Have them ask what is pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, in the Son, in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Through the Stations of the Cross, we follow in Jesus' footsteps from Pilate's Palace to Calvary. We invite you to walk with Father Pat Fitzpatrick as he leads us on a journey of reflection through the passion and death of our Lord. To order Father Fitzpatrick's book, Reflections on the Way to the Cross, please visit our website or call our office at 1-888-3833-6277 for information. 